So, today what I want to talk to you about is uh, it's really the magic of Harry Potter, but not talking about the fantasy of it or the science fiction part of it, but more about how really understanding maths and physics or understanding how we can do engineering and how we can actually look at the problem and try to solve it from a logical perspective can get us to the point where we can make science fiction a reality. Start with the introduction. So if I start with throwing the question, I to start with the lecture and see at the end of it what happens, do you think we can make invisibility cloak a reality? Which means making yourself hidden and invisible from anyone who can see you. Can you make yourself invisible? Do you think we can make it? Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes. 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 This is my name, I'm Akram al -Umaini. I'm from the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science at Queen Mary University of London, which is not far from here. It's just, I think, a mile or a mile and a half away from here. And the stuff we do at the school varies for you, from looking at the theoretical part of computer science, the way into stuff like programming, <coughs> sitting on a computer, trying to find if this code is correct or not, trying to merge computer science with biology, understand how cells act, how do they behave, and on top of that, trying to merge engineering and electronic side of it you know, the mobile phones you have, the capsules and so on. So, what we've done so far from an engineering and scientist perspective proved to us that we might have a step closer to making all science fiction become a reality. The stuff like cyborgs, they, they become a reality now. The stuff like reading your minds, moving objects from a distance. Even if it's not a magical <coughs> thing, but you still can move objects from a distance using internet connection, using electromagnetic waves and so on. Stuff like making robots actually understand the environment around them. You have the internet, you have the connection, you have the wireless. So the robot can come to your face and check your face. If you have a Facebook account, if you have a social network account, if you have a LinkedIn account, the robot can connect to it, finds your name, age, your interests and hobbies. So the robots start learning about yourself. So a machine that can actually grow in age, that's a possibility now. The same thing with a capsule that you can swallow and take pictures inside your body. You can take electronic, swallow it, it has to leave your system in 24 hours. So all this becoming a reality. But still, we're talking about objects, physicals and so on. But invisibility still looks like a challenging problem. Can we really solve it? I'm talking about an object in front of you making it totally invisible. Can we get that to happen? And hopefully by the end of the talk, I'll prove to you that it could be a possibility to get to that point. Even when it comes to science fiction, like Harry Potter, I know you're older than Harry Potter, I never liked Harry Potter, but anyway. So, even in books like Harry Potter, you get him talking about invisibility club being one of the strongest magic they can do. Even in Predators and the other movies, invisibility is something that comes from space. It's really something that we can't make or we can't touch. And, and, and if we think that we can make it, are we going crazy? Are we going mad? Are we, are we taking this theoretical aspects too far? Or as engineers, do we want to build it and do we want to make it a reality? These are the two famous figures that pushed everyone to talk about visibility. The invisible woman and the invisible man, right? So what do you think the main difference between them, besides the fact that it's male female? So what's the main difference from the technique of making themselves invisible? What do you think the difference between them? From, from the picture, from the appearance, what is the difference? How can the invisible woman, how does she become invisible and what's the difference from the invisible man? She's still got the white lines and he's got nothing. He's got nothing. The actual difference is that he's got nothing from his body, right? But his clothes are still out there, right? The invisible one woman, everything becomes invisible. You can't see any part of her. So there are two different techniques. One, where she's using the clothing and the material that she's wearing in order to make herself and everything touching her invisible. The second one is making only his body invisible. And we see the difference between them from a physical and engineering perspective and which one we can actually make a reality and which one is actually more challenging or more difficult at the moment to think about making it a, a, a subject of invisibility or cloaking. Ways to make things invisible. The first thing that people can do magic tricks. You can see people flying on TVs and stuff, it's all magic tricks. It's all about me if I bring a silver lining, lighting, a dark one space of this area and I use tricks on your eyes to make you 
uh, pay attention to something specific on the corner of this room, or pay attention to the ceiling, or pay attention to the gold or silver lining somewhere, they are tricking your eyes to see what I'm doing, for example, at my feet, which is raising myself out. So it's conjuring. It's getting you to think that I'm doing something impossible, but it's really about tricking your eyes and manipulating how you see the objects around you. Mirrors and direction play a major role in doing magical tricks. All this special material used in magical tricks is made from highly reflective material, which means if light comes to me, everything will reflect back into your eyes in a very high quality. So it distracts you from looking at the minute uh, details that the magi magician is doing in order to trick you and think that he's raising something from the floor or he's making something fly. Right? So it's the first step, even they've done it in the past, in history, using these magical tricks because they understand that your eyes do all the job. Without light and without your eyes, you never see anything. And without light specifically, you can't see anything going around us. So if I can trick eye, uh, lights, I can play around with lights reflection, I can get you to pay attention to something else than what you are looking at. Take it a step, uh, take it a step backward, and this is really important. Every time you look at a problem and a challenge, you have to take a step uh, backward, and you look at the basics of it. Why is it happening? Light, this light reflection, this sun reflection. Most of you would have heard about you know, a light reflecting from the water, from the water, from, from the mirrors. You heard about diffraction. You know the story of uh, object inside water looks different. So one of the basics of physics and math when looking at signals is actually the fact that a wave hitting two media, for example, air or water, will, will be forced to do something different. Will have to change the speed. It's the same thing as me running on, uh, on air, same speed of running, and then if I hit water, that water will stop my speed, will slow it down, because it, it, I'm facing a resistance, something is stopping me from going further. And light is the same thing, it's a physical object. If it travels in the air, air is empty, there's nothing there, the speed is the speed light, like Einstein stated it, but once it hits water, it faces a resistance, it faces something that pulls it back, which is the, which is the medium, which is the water, right? Building these materials, which means understanding that if light hits the floor, it goes back into different direction. If light goes somewhere else, it goes into different direction. The same as a tennis ball. Assuming that this tennis ball is a light wave, if it hits the floor, it doesn't come back exactly to the point where I left it from, right? And why do you think that is? Why doesn't it come back to the same point? The water. The? It's so what, what, what did heavy heaviness made it do? Beside gravity, what's happened to it? What happened there is everything in life. See, one trick in physics that we couldn't say, energy. We don't know how it is created or we don't know if we can destroy it. And that's what's happening here. The energy from the speed of the tennis ball hitting the floor is, is lost with the friction with the floor. Right? Some of the energy is distributed in the floor now. I didn't destroy it, I lost it somewhere else. Like what happens when you turn electricity into heat, when you turn water into heat or electricity and so on. We never lose it or we never destroy it, but we change it from one form into another. And that's what's happening. Light wave hits it, it comes back into the same direction. If I change the direction slightly, it goes somewhere else. Right? And the same thing happens when you hit it on the wall. Just playing with tennis ball and doing that experiment, different direction. But anyway, so what happens here is that when light, you let light out of a light beam or a room, it goes crazy. It goes everywhere, and that's and that's why you, sometimes if, if there's not enough light and you can't see me properly, that, that's why sometimes I lost the resolution of the screen because it doesn't reflect everything back into your eyes. Most of the light, or some of it actually, goes somewhere else, either to the wall, either to the back of the screen, or other directions. And this is a famous science experiment you see, and it's the same concept I talked about. You put a pencil inside a glass full of water, it looks different in water than space because the speed of light change. It's nothing happening to the material of the pen, the water is not banking the pen or the glass is affecting the material. The only thing that changed, light reflects from space differently than light reflected from a medium which is water. Because the speed has changed, now it's traveling slower, and that's why you see this part before you see the, the bottom part. And, and that's the whole point of, of light playing a trick on your eyes to let you know that, for example, I'm bending or I change the structure, which direction I'm costing it or I'm changing the behavior. Famous on water reflections. This is, this is the best example for losing energy or where does light go. 
Because once light reflections from all these uh, buildings and so on and momentum and stuff, when it hits the water surface, some of it actually escape inside the water. So I lost some of the energy already to inside the water. Some of it reflects into a different area rather than directly to the lens of the camera that's taking this picture. Right? So it's, it's, it's gone everywhere. So if, if I let most of the principles shoot it from a machine, it will go everywhere and I can't control it. So the trick now is that understanding these basics, can we actually control light? Can we actually look at ways of how we can get light to do stuff we want it to, rather than light controlling what it does? And this example we can see is from rainbows after rains, right? And bubbles. Uh, I had a bubble machine, but I broke it because it was 99 cents. So the question is, what is the most attractive aspects of a bubble? If I had a bubble machine and you see the bubbles, what is the most attractive aspect of it? What's the distinct feature about a bubble, water bubble? <laughs> okay, and beside the circuit, the, 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 what is on the circuit really? Rainbow, right? The light, the different color spectrum. And this happens because light comes from the sky, which is white light, which doesn't exist by the way, there's no white light. Everything we see around us is a combination of different colors combined to give us white light. Physically, white light doesn't exist. It's a combination of all the different colors we see, the red, the green, the blue, yellow, and so on. So in a bubble, if you see here from, from water bubbles, or if you see in a bubble machine, the light hits the bubble a different direction. Now you saw the tennis ball hitting the floor into a sharp direction of going directly to me, or going to a direction up there or down to the floor. But it hit it with a sharp hit. Now when you have a spherical shape or a, or a circle from inside, now this will hit this at different angles each time the light rays hit the bubble from the inside. So each of them will reflect differently. When they reflect differently, means they're traveling at a different speed. In physics, different speed translates to us at different frequency. And the different frequencies give us the different colors you see there. Blue has a frequency, red has a frequency, and yellow has a frequency. And this is the same frequency concept that we talk about when we look at mobile phones or wireless connection. But it's a different higher number, at a higher spectrum. So it allows us to see all the different components of the white light we have in front of us. So the other thing we wanted to look at, we started observing things around us. We started looking at rainbows and what happened to them, the pencil inside the water. So observing things is really an important aspect of turning everything that you think is a science fiction into reality. We talked about a couple of, of, of methods to get invisibility done, which is tricking light or, or manipulating light as it flies, and also looking at conjuring, tricking your eyes to think that we're doing something different. The other aspect which the invisible man does very good is changing his body to make it invisible. Okay? So now, I said before, the only reason you see me is because I reflect light. If I take light and absorb it, you'll never be able to see me. You only see highlights of my body. You only see a black shadow walking with no details at all, right? Because I have to reflect light, otherwise you can't see me, otherwise I don't exist. The, the, the story of Peter Pan losing his shadow. Now, for the invisible man, he made himself exactly the same material as space. He can turn his body to be the same material as space. If I have the same material as space, right, will this ball see me? It wouldn't. Yeah, from a light perspective. If this ball is light, the light wouldn't see me as something different than a space because it can't reflect from me. This is a concept we call the refractive index in physics, which controls how much of the light reflects back, reflects into a different direction. And, and this is what controls how light reflects from the wall, from me, from the camera, from the stance, and so on. So the invisible man managed to make all his body the same property exactly as the space around it. Right? Do you think we can make this a reality? changing our body properties. You think we can make this a reality? Wake up. <laughs> no, right? One of them is saying, no, and impossible is nothing really. We could make it a reality, but the question is now, this is actually changing every organ of the body. Now, it would be interesting to know that our human bodies are not only skin or muscle, they're multiple organs. It's the most complex machine you can ever work with from a physical perspective and biological perspective. Because each of my organs, the skin, the muscles, the blood vessels, the kidney, the liver, each of them have different electric properties, which means each of them will behave differently when light hits it. 
Light traveling through a kidney will travel at a different speed than light traveling on a skin or a muscle. Each of them is complex. So if I want to change my body to have the same property as a space, I need to change each of them, each of the organs inside. So this is becoming difficult, and as lazy engineers, we always look at an easier option to go through it, or a way around it to still get stuff invisible without changing the refractive index of the person. However, to see how interesting it is to refractive index being the same value for each of the media, this will be very interesting. You see the crystal balls here. Look at those beads. Sorry. When you throw them into water, they disappear. You don't need to get stuck. So the, the crystal ball is disappearing inside water, right? And here they're not using any tricks. They're not playing a camera trick. Even light can detect these crystal balls. They disappear inside water, right? And now, when he takes it, you can't see anything? Yeah? He takes it out. Come on now. Yeah, you can see the crystal balls. And just not for you to think it's a trick. I brought a 3D option of this video. So you have the crystal balls in my hand. Yeah? The crystal balls. They're happy. I drew. You want to come here? You can see. Crystal balls, right? And they're called water beads. Uh, it's slippery, that's why. <laughs> so if I put it inside water, oh my water, okay. Maybe you can see it because the water is a different one. So it's very hard to see them, right? Unless you have very good light selection. If I take it out, it still exists. You can see my hand because it's a different refractive index, but you can't see the water beads. And that's why, because the water beads have exactly the same electric properties as water, right? They're special crystal uh, sodium-based water. You can buy them from B&Q, from eBay, from anywhere. It's called water beads. And they're commonly used in decoration for plants. You put it, and they release water slowly. They become very small. You put it in water, they absorb most of the water. They take more of the water property, and they become similar to water from an electric perspective, right? And then, you release water slowly when you want them to do that. So, from some material, it is possible to do that. For some material, we can change the refractive index. But then, that means it still is a complex thing for a human body. And I want to make a human body invisible. I want to change some of the objects around it that have more than one electric properties invisible. I turn back now into the invisible woman. Because she has a better trick to do that. She doesn't change only her body, she uses everything around her to make herself invisible. What she's doing, it's not like the invisible man changing his property, but what she's doing, she's tricking light to think that she doesn't exist. So what she's doing to light, to make it think that actually light doesn't exist or it doesn't behave that way. Again, we look into something more sophisticated, something closer to us rather than objects and rather than science fiction. Animals, the animal kingdoms, what they do. This box there, on, on, on the, the left side of the screen top there, is the Siberian fox. In winter, it looks different than in autumn. In autumn, you can see all the different colors, the gray, the white, and so on. In winter, it appears white, fully white. And this is exactly the same fox. Sorry, I couldn't bring one of you there to prove to you, but you can see it, you can Google it, right? They change their behavior. Because what they do in winter, the biological tissue, change how they actually contract and expand. The muscle change in behavior, allowing more lights to reflect back on the skin. And the hair change into translucent hair, because it allows you to do that. The polar bear. What's the color of the polar bear skin? White, creamy white. The skin, not the hair. What's the color of the polar bear skin? You think, you all think it's white? Mm -hmm. No one saw discovery? Shut up. Okay, all right, watch it. So, it's black. The skin here is black, actually. The polar bear skin is black, and it appears white because the hair on top of the skin, the fur is translucent. It means it's, it's something mirror-wise, but a see-through, that allows the reflection from the snow around it to reflect back into our eyes. Yeah? It takes... It takes the colors from the surroundings, the white and other colors, and reflect it back into your eyes, right? And that's... Sorry. If the spin was in the jungle, you'd be a different color. 
Okay, they will be different color, not jungle color, but it will be brownish color. And that's because this hair allows the reflection of all lights around it. And when you mix all the different colors together, the best color you can get is brown. You can test it when you put the brown, all the colors from the painting together, you get brown, and that's hence the brownish color you see there. And even in the zoo, when you see polar bears in the zoo, they appear dirtyish, right? But they're not. It's just a reflection of different components within the cage that the polar bear is. But the more amazing example in nature about making stuff invisible, or how animals actually stop predators from seeing them, or trying to find how they behave, is under sea world, right? Octopus, cuttlefishes, and so on. The next video is the most amazing video that got scientists to even think about we can actually make the man invisible. I can change the property of my organs to make me invisible. So what you see here is that they're filming, biologists in America, they're filming underwater, and they're trying to see how the creatures actually stop themselves from being seen by predators. And you see the octopus appearing there. And this is real time, octopus changing the whole behavior of the cell. And, and I will play in slow motion just to prove to you that it's actually making cells invisible. There's no point of doing tricks on the sea water because it costs them a lot to go down and film this stuff. So what happens here, the octopus has something similar to what the polar bear is doing. It's reflecting whatever the light coming from a direction. But the polar bear reflects everything from the surrounding. But the octopus is different. The octopus only takes the shape of the object that is attached to it. And that's because its biological skin and underneath it has some protein muscles and other complex biological cells that only allows light from a different direction to reflect back. It doesn't allow everything to reflect, but whatever direction the octopus wants the light to reflect from, it points these muscles that open a mirror-like skins, and then it allows light to reflect from this skin into your eyes or the predator looking at it. So it only reflects light in this case from the plant that you saw, not from every surrounding, and hence it appears as a weird object inside water. So we looked at this stuff as humans, and we thought, how can we actually start building this stuff on? How can we get stuff invisible? And the first people to do that, and this is amazing, because artists and people who work in the media, they love practicing on things. So the first thing they started is that we paint over it with the same color, and it looks the same. It doesn't look anything different. This is a project from the north of England. This is a student, and the whole point here, she's trying to say cars has to be uh, environmental friendly. She painted the car with the same color as the background and now appears partially invisible. But what's, what's the problem with this kind of invisibility? You can still see the object. So if the environment, let's say, is partially invisible, right? Let's say if she painted really well and she made it totally invisible. What's the other problem you can see with it? So what happens if the car moves? So yeah. yeah. If the car moves, it's changing the background of the environment, so you can't, you, it's not invisible anymore. You can still see it if it moves into a different environment. So this is a temporary solution to make this stuff invisible. Looking at thing painted in the same and the color behind it. And now artists can do that. Buildings in, in, in London are painted in a certain way so they don't look odd, they don't look out of the picture. Now, a group of scientists from Himera in Japan, they worked on, on an idea to make this camouflage, which is making yourself blend with the environment, mobile camouflage, which means dynamic, it changes with the environment. We have cameras, we have reflections, we have high quality uh, images. Can we play with all the equipment we have in order to get an invisibility based on camouflage, which means me, or the invisible cloak in this case, taking the picture of the back. And you see here, different objects actually taking different picture. So the sphere here is the invisibility cloak. It's hiding the person's face and it's taking picture of the background. So how do you think they're doing that? How do you think they manage to do that? Change the background of the wall wherever it moves. Oh, that's the projector. The projector, that's one. What about the picture from the background? How do they do that? That's the special material. The material of the sphere, yes, that's a special material. What about the picture? How do they get that dated picture all the time? The camera, right? There's a camera behind the person that's taking the picture all the time. Yeah? So what, do they, what, what they did 
is actually they got a camera at the back taking the picture, constant picture that's changing with higher quality, send these pictures to a computer that plays with the image and updates the image proper, uh, properties, send it to a computer, enhance the image quality, send it to a projector that projects the image into the clock. Now the difference, I should be invisible when I'm standing in front of this projector, right? But I'm not, because the difference is in the material that clock is made of. Right? We talked about reflection, we talked about the fact that if the material is not highly reflected, I don't get all of the energy, which means I'm reducing the quality of that image. But what they played around with here is materials actually made of small beads inside the material, they reflect light back exactly in the same direction that it came from. Which means with minimum loss of energy, I'll see the highest resolution ever, and that's why these spheric ball coated with this material or the coat that you're wearing, they can reflect light back into your eyes with minimum loss, and hence you see it's an image exactly of what is the background that's taking place. And this concept has been taken a step further by the military. You talk invisibility, you directly know that the military will love that, because they want to make stuff invisible or high quality. So BA Systems is the largest aerospace or military defense company in Europe and in the world, BA Systems. They took this concept of uh, optical or active camouflage or dynamic one that changes with the environment and they built an invisible tank. An invisible tank, but not only invisible or it's not invisible from human eyes, but invisible from something different. Because when you go to war now, we're in the modern war, no one uses go look at the person and kill that person or attack that person. Everyone uses technology. We use radar system, we use uh, heat detection and infrared detection. So what they did, they covered this tank with small pixels, like an image pixel. And that pixel is made of electronics material, it's made of cameras, it's made of heat sensitive detectors. What they do for the tank, they take a picture from something in the surrounding, for example a sheep or a car or a person, reflect the heat signature of that person on the tank. Now an enemy sitting somewhere else in a different country, when they hit the button for a heat detector missile, the missile will look for the heat signature of your body, the heat signature of the target. Only the heat signature of that target. If you can't find that target, the missile will destroy itself. And this is the new technology for weapons. So what happens here is that VA system, what they manage to do, reflect a different heat signature than a tank. So now when the enemy sends a heat um, a missile, to hit this tank, they will think that you will have to find the tank heat signature. But now the system cleverly, they reflected on that screen a heat signature of a sheep. So you wouldn't think that you would kill a sheep. What's the point of that, right? So in this case, they managed to make that tank invisible from the enemy, from a different technology rather than the eyes that we have today. But all of this is fine, but still, Having convinced you that I can actually put a cape on and make myself invisible. This is the trick we still haven't achieved. Everything we talked about is that a light going somewhere, I can, for example, get an invisible tag, I can put something different, reflect a different color. We talked about losing his shadow. If I walk on the street, there is a source of light, I don't have a shadow, what does it tell about me? I'm not there. I don't exist, right? There is a mass of me, but I don't exist. How come I don't reflect light? And this is what happens with Peter Pan's story. He lost his shadow, but everyone can see that there's something there, except the shadow, right? So, in the military as well, when they have the Air Force and air flights and so on, they have absorbed material that absorb the radar signal, so nothing reflects from it. So the enemy can never see it, or you can't detect the presence of that thing, yeah? But I can see it, but I can't detect it. We went back into nature, and we showed that water have speed, water have width, water have physical properties. So it's like waves somehow. And we saw that in a stream, water bends around a stone and then puts back a speed at the same time. So if I measure water speed at point A, there's a stone in the middle, water speed at point B, exactly the same speed with no change. Right? So if water can do it, it can bend around an object and put itself together to go on, on the same speed with no change at all. But can actually light a wave that is not actually physically strong or physically heavy do the same thing. We went back to nature and we saw that mirages can do the same thing. Right? You know a mirage in the desert or in hit area, he, uh, very hot area, you can't see it here at all. But what happens there is that the mirage is just a trick of a light reflecting from the sky. 
The difference between a light reflecting every day and a mirage is that if a light reflects from this light to the wall, it will hit back exactly at the sharp angle. But what's happening with the mirage is that you have very hot air near the ground, cooler air above that. 